What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Kind of Funny Podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Greg Miller, alongside the producer slash seducer, Nick Scarpino. Hello, Greg. Is this a new sweatshirt? Or I'm, no, this you've worn this kind for a long time. I think what you're what you're kind nice of thrown off by right? is that I'm wearing a hat. It makes mm-hmm. everything Where'd look... Where'd you get that hat? Oh, that hat? You can get it on Patreon this month. It is our exclusive item. If you guys want to grab it over there, it's available for approximately... Three, is it a leap year? It is a leap it year. It is a leap year. What is that? Was three more days? I don't know. One more? Yeah, I mean, I, March 1st is Friday. March 1st is Friday. <laughs> Get it before Thursday. If you guys want to go support us over on Patreon at that tier, you guys can grab this dad hat. And then, man, I'll tell you what, it's great. I've been wearing it. Two it does straight. look good. I do want I wear a dad hat every weekend. And so I'm, I'm wearing a Giants hat, but it's the, the problem was I needed a Giants hat that was just all black oh. or black and white because you know I, the, the orange doesn't match anything I normally wear. Mm. So when we went to the game last year, I got it, but it was one of those things where my head was in between the, uh, what is it, um, L? It, I, was, I wasn't... There's they do a combo for these hats. It's not a, it's not a, a snap. Oh, so it was I was like I was I wasn't a large felt too tight and an extra large felt a little too loose. But I went with the XL. But I feel like it looks like I'm wearing a helmet. Like I feel like it's too big. You're thinking that far ahead in terms of it matching your whole outfit. Hundred with a dad with that hat for me, it's like it's over. Right? I'm wearing the dad hat. I don't give a fuck about anything else. Like I don't care what color but it I'm is. A, I don't I'm care one what of I'm those wearing. what you call sexy dads, Roger. Oh, all right. Like I want you to know when I'm out there, I'm looking fucking fine. Yeah. Because right? I got the sweatshirt on. It's covered in shit. I got these fine. pants on. It's covered it's covered in, in shit. shit. <laughs> oh yeah. If you're rolling with Ben, you got snot on you. You got <laughs> sidewalk chalk on you. Yeah, you yeah. Got Last meal on you or whatever. Character growth from Greg. Like the biggest. Oh, phobe man. I've ever met in my life, and now Dude. he's like, you know what? Kids change that immediately. <laughs> I mean, let me tell you, like, you have to get over some shit, you know, to be a dad. Literally, you know shit. I mean? Literally, yeah, the shit hasn't been as bad as people have made it out to be. Yeah. Me and Kevin once had a beautiful brunch mm. with Scott Porter and his wife, and in that lunch brunch, he scared they us. scarred Kevin so badly oh, yeah. about the amount of poop and shit like that you'd have to deal with. And it has not been that bad. Wow. Like, don't get me wrong. There's blow. There were blowouts as a baby, and this, that, and the other. I hate when you call them blowouts. That's like you call them. There it was like one time that you you, you called me Thanks. and were like, "Hey, I need you to to handle games daily or something." There's been a blowout. Yeah. And I was like, "That can't mean what I think." And it did mean what it. And it, yeah, it did. Yeah. It's yeah. on the wall. Oh. The funny thing is, like I, you know, I, you know, again, none of it's bad. I never want to scare somebody off from parenting, right? Because I think that you only hear the bad stuff. You know, feel all, all, like I, you know, last night I was in bed crying. Because I saw, <laughs> <laughs> I saw a TikTok, not bad, not bad. A TikTok not bad. right before I came in about like one of those like uh, like POV like you come home when you come home and the kids are crazy like you know you got imagine you time travel so that like you're coming back to that memory from where you are where they don't want to hang out with you mm. and they don't greet you at the door and they're not even living mm. with you anymore and it was that thing of like it's passing so quickly you know what I mean like, like, becoming a person yada 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 uh, yeah, but man. yeah. The poop hasn't been that bad. You know what I mean? Well, that's good. Yeah, yeah. I'll tell you, I'm still jarred right now by potty training, where it is that he shits in the little toilet, and then I just got this turd in a bowl. (laughs) You know what I mean? And then he wants to flush it, so I got to go over there, and I dump it in the toilet, and then he's, like, pawing around the fucking toilet. I'm like, ah, you want to talk about the germophobia? I'm like, I just got to let it go. Yeah. Just got to wash his hands. Why not get one of those little potties that fit on your toilet? We got one of those. Mm -hmm. You have multiples of everything you'll find out soon, and he decides. Ben's very good right now. Like in the middle playing, I got a potty. And he gets excited, and then it's a well, you want big toilet, or you want a little toilet. Potty party, little toilet. This morning uh, he was like, "Mama, go in the little toilet." She's like, "I'm not gonna go in the little toilet. I'm gonna go in the big toilet." I'll see. You see, later. thank God, thank God, he didn't ask Dad. <laughs> <laughs> Dad would have, I would have dropped right there. You know oh I mean? my lord! <laughs> I'll fill the fucking bowl. Man. No, no, Dad. <laughs> uh, horrible. I got tell the you. large yogurt. Roger. Yes. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining us. It's an honor. We love having you on here and stuff like that. You've listened to me a long time. Yes. If there's one thing you know about me, it's that I don't like doing sequels. Oh. Every podcast comes out here. It's a brand new idea. I don't want to (laughs) double back on old things. Ranking the months. Ranking the days. (laughs) Exactly. Some of that shit happens when I'm not here. All right? Uh, But no, we need to follow up last week's podcast. Oh. Because so many people have been great about welcoming me to this parallel universe that i'm living in yeah. oh that's right you know uh blessing continued it throughout games daily that week making jokes with me and having a good time about it i want you to know shaken to my fucking core the other day playing hell divers with one khalif adams it's saturday ben's napping up there i see con i'm like i'll jump in i'll do some shit with him jumped on two best friends joined. we're all out there playing having killing some bugs having a great time and uh i forget how we got there but we started talking about one of the greatest movies of all time, 
Robo. Major League. Sure. <clears throat> and we're going, and then Kaz like, we need a rem- We need a new Major League. And I'm like, do we really? And he's like, yeah, we could get the, everybody back, and yada, yada, yada. And I'm like, well, you couldn't do it. He's like, what do you mean? I'm like, well, Charlie. And he's like, what do you mean? I'm like, well, Charlie Sheen's dead. <laughs> And everyone's like, no, he's not. Is he? Like, it was one of those, like, is he? Isn't he? Blah, blah, blah. And so then I did, like, the, hey, Siri. And, like, and Charlie Sheen very much alive yeah. in this universe. I want you to know, <laughs> if I'm lying, I'm dying. I remember in my universe, my timeline, Charlie Sheen did die. Like, this is not something I misheard. I misremembered. Yeah. He is alive in this universe, everybody. That's fucking crazy. Yeah. Was that, like, what? a recent death, or was that, like, a long no, time ago? No, totally, it was not, like, a long time ago. Like, you know, yeah. like, he had a motorcycle accident at 16 or something. He came off the set of Ferris Bueller's Day Off and got hit. He was in that in this world. <laughs> oh, was he in that in this one? No. no. Yeah, he was. No. Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Yes, he yes, was. Yes, he was. He, he was. was. In the, he, in the he police a, station. A oh, you're right. He wasn't oh. Ferris Bueller. He wasn't Ferris Bueller. No. Yeah. Oh, he, <laughs> he could have been the hot man. Jesus. I you really thought you were saying he was Ferris I would Bueller. Get up and I would leave. Universe. I would get, this would be where I would go like, I don't even know Google scientist time travel universe. Yeah, there and be like, someone oh, got shit. out. Yes, he was. Because it's no longer funny. Yes. I mean, it was funny, Greg, because you were so like into the bit that I was like, wait, damn, <laughs> yeah. Greg is committing Truly. to this. But no, no, no yeah, he, no. he was in One it. One piece no. of trivia for that. Jennifer Gray and him were, were friends from Red Dawn. And she recommended oh. him for that. Oh. And she was like, you should have him this bit part. And then she was actually weir- another weird piece of trivia. She was dating Matthew Broderick at the time, playing his sister. Uh, they can make a lot of money on the that hub right now. That. The hub. <laughs> Charlie What's Sheen? the rev share like on the hub, Raj? Not You're great. Kid, not no? great from what I've heard. Not great. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we can look into it. Me and Nick want to I run st- those ads at one time. I still want to run ads on Pornhub. I do too. For KFF, a show that has ended, and we do it's once fitting. a year now. Yeah. <laughs> but I think we could. I think we. I, w- can I carve out like, I'll just, we'll start with a moderate budget 10K a month. 10K a month, okay. <laughs> Modern yeah, 10K budget. A month. yeah. Not bad. Uh, we'll, we'll support it on the Patreon. We'll sell mm-hmm. more of these hats. I'll sell them for you. I'll okay. get them out there. Yeah. And uh, you to watch while I clean up. <laughs> well, the, if you remember, the ad we ran was was hey, we know what Summarize. you're doing when 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 you're done doing it. Come watch KFF. Yeah. If we talk hey. about nerd stuff, you probably like nerd stuff because you're masturbating to porn. And oh. I like mm. nerd stuff, and I have in fact masturbated to porn. So <laughs> simpatico. Yeah. I like We're just that. like you, KFF. Maximum We're nerd. just like you. That's what they want to hear. Do you don't want to? You know, I mean, you don't want that. You know, think about this. Like imagine. Think about this. When I'm gonna let you know something right now, Greg. When, when I'm looking at the, porn, I'm not looking for relatability. Here's what I'm saying though. <laughs> you're you got your putt in your hand, and you've clicked on that one video that's gonna get you there. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. And what do you but see? But you're Tim, so you're standing. You're standing fully clothed in the shower with Jordans on, because right. Tim's a never nude. We all know that. <laughs> imagine this. Thing. I just mean he's you, being in shame. Oh, I see. <laughs> You're about to get there, right? You're about to, you're about to get I taken to the to the to the, the candy there. shop, if you know what I mean. And you see it in the, the ad that plays beforehand. Because here's the genius about this, Roger: mm-hmm. is the only thing you can really advertise before porn is more porn. Yeah, advertisers don't really want to be seen before that type of content. Or, or dick pills. Di- well, I mean, anything that's related to an yeah. erection or whatever, right? Or for some reason, erection I get, adjacent. I yeah. get the I get the the ads for like, hey, you want more cum? I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> you know, dude, it's like <laughs> dumb buckets of cum. Like, <laughs> you know, it's like Bucket, gross. You know who wants that? Big Kleenex. Jesus. Like, yes. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. That's pretty funny. But imagine this, right? You click on the video and the, the pure ad starts and it's the old KFAF set. And my head just slowly peeks up right by the camera and I'm like, hey. Hey Tim, <laughs> what, what, are you do- <laughs> what are you doing? What are you doing down there? What What's are you that? doing down How you doing, there, buddy? Oh. You playing with yourself? Yeah, <laughs> whacking it. <laughs> I like I oh, like you hilarious. saying hey Tim because then when yeah. it hits for the Tim, no, for the one, yeah. Yeah. The Tim for I gotta one. check this out. You're gonna freak the fuck out. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, about that. yeah, yeah <laughs> do like yeah. Yeah. do like four or five of them. I thought for there. a long time we should post our videos, just our podcast on Pornhub. People did for a while, right? Yeah, somebody does. They did for a while. Kind of suit. Got a suit. God, that was that was a thing for a while. I don't think people, I don't know if they do it anymore. But. Fair enough. Well, that's suit. the kind of funny podcast. <laughs> <laughs> if you didn't know, ladies and gentlemen, this is the kind of funny podcast each and every week. Four, sometimes five, best friends gather on this table. Each coming to hang out and talk with each other about whatever it is they want to talk about. If you want to talk with us, of course, you can write in for free at kindoffunny.com slash kf. 
podcast. Give us your topics. If you love what we do, please support us with the Kind of Funny membership. With the Kind of Funny membership on Patreon or YouTube, you can get each and every episode of the Kind of Funny podcast ad-free, along with all the other shows ad-free. You can watch us record the show live as we record it, even at a special time, like right now, just like... Taquito Broadsword is, Mr. Freak Show 49 is, and Zach Brown. 80-20 Adirac split. We should get on this. That's a good split. Yeah. yeah. Starting in April. Solid, but what, what, what way is the 80, you know? Probably to a point, that's, of, if I'm guessing. You, <laughs> yeah. That's, you that's you the to, problem with that. You need to make content that is, like, people want to watch on Pornhub is the important thing. I, but here, think of it this way, Kevin, all right? It's like you're saying, hey, I'm going to go to the watermelon district. <laughs> and so how many shops can you go by that are just watermelons if you saw one selling oranges you're like you know what Weird. what a nice break of the monotony of watermelon i should check that that's out. that's us if everything's some big tits big dick small dick <laughs> small ass and then nick's there it's just nick doing his <laughs> podcast is there hey everyone let's talk about 80s tim, movies I, I, tim, I need did you know that charlie sheehan <laughs> it's on me it's on me I here, mean, Kev. Someone has to. I can't <laughs> put that on Roger. You can also get my daily video series, uh, Greg Way, each and every day, only as a Kind of Funny member. Uh, you can get the Kind of Funny podcast with ads, of course, and without the exclusive content on YouTube and podcast services around the globe. Thank you to our Patreon producers, Carl Jacobs, uh, Kishan Patel, Nathan Lamoth, uh, Karen Linderner, uh, James Hastings, Casey Andrew, Casey Kern. Today we're brought to you by Avatar, Braving the Elements, and Game Showdown. Woo! 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 Tim? Yes. You and I are about to do what we love doing. Embark on a journey. Get in the car. That's not the part we love. Go to BJ's, which we do love. That's fine. But more importantly, go to WWE Raw. Raw. We're going to Raw in San Jose tonight. That's why we're recording at a very special time. And we're very excited about that. Mm -hmm. But at the last minute, ladies and gentlemen, the one and only Roger Picorn Ooh, is RP. coming to Raw as well. Woo! What? what? Thank you. Thank you. What, thank ask, you. Before you even do that, because I, I think it's going to feed into my next thing. I want you to know how happy I was today when I put up the Trello and I said, who needs a WWE code? And I turned to ask Roger a question. I saw him filling out the thing to request. Xbox. Him. You know what I mean, Tim? I know Not exactly. Not yeah. PC. That's all that matters to me. Roger, look at you, little WWE fan. Yeah. Re now ask your question. I, I could have sworn when I came in this morning, you said you weren't going. Well, because Mike was doing the what thing changed? where he went rogue, right? It was supposed to be the four we WWE fans that are going. And I'm a new WWE person, right? So yeah. I understand why I wasn't initially invited, right? So then Nick, Mike comes in and he's like, hey, Slappy, I bought a second ticket. And I want you to come right now. And I'm like, I don't know what's happening. And I get nervous when people start like changing up plans and no one's talking to each other. So then yeah. he did that. But then I thought about it. I was like, you know what? I need to go. I need to go. I need to experience this. I need to experience this live. And I, I just oh, started getting it. What? What, Tim? I, just, I didn't realize. I know you said this to me, but I, I thought it was a, Mike bought you a ticket. Y yes. He Let bought a ticket. Okay. Oh, I don't have it on me. Okay. I don't have it on me. But he, okay. bought, he bought two tickets uh, separately. He, he bought was, two tickets. He bought two tickets. One for him. I think one for me and then one for Kevin A. Sex. Okay. Okay. So and then he was good. like, but then he had an extra ticket. So he's like, why don't you come with me? I'm like, okay, cool. I mean, I, yeah, sure. I guess. I don't know. So that, that's why I talked to Tim about it. And he's yeah. like, yeah. I yeah, think. that's not what I said. Oh, yeah, you said, fuck you, and then you said, yeah, you <laughs> He's like, can I come with you guys? I said, no, you fucking loser. <laughs> Don't get fucked, loser. What a great Please boss. Shit. What a great <laughs> boss. <laughs> but, no, but no, I'm very excited for this because yeah. uh, you are so new to the world of professional wrestling. It seems yes. like you've been so invested anytime we're talking about the road to WrestleMania recently. Finish but that story. Did, did you ever watched before or is it just kind of like where were you no, at? No, I, I, I watched it a little bit when I was a kid and then I remember distinctly watching it. My mom walks in she said, this is stupid. And I was like, okay, this is the last time. Call your mom. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I was like, this is the last time. This is the last time I'm watching it. And then I just never Damn, really... You were that easily it, it was, that, That's it. That's I it. I, yeah. I, I love my mom to death. So it's like... She saw you smoking a cigarette. She's like, that's stupid. <laughs> <I'm fucking done." laughs> but yeah, no, I watched it a little bit back in the day and then, yeah, recently when it was my birthday and it was also Royal Rumble at the same time and I had a bunch of friends over from high my high school friends and this is this year's rumble yeah this year's okay. rumble and i didn't have like you know i hadn't seen them in a minute didn't want to have some type of social lubricator as it were so i put up royal rumble mm -hmm. and then i was like we just ended up just watching it and we're like fuck this is an incredible experience and yeah. i had no idea what was happening i learned about everyone's cheering fucking finish this story i'm like i don't know what the story is but yeah. this guy seems pretty cool and then i've just been down the rabbit hole I'm i feel just, like you've I'm, been having dates with mike it feels like yes. right you guys have been staying here and watching raw or smackdown yeah. right we watched smackdown last week and that was was a special experience. Okay. Yeah, that was my okay. first SmackDown I've seen. And what made it special? 
Mike. You know what I mean? Just us ordering a twenty-five dollar cheeseburger and just sitting there after work and just <laughs> and just watching watching the rock come out there and just eat up the scenery. Sure. It's incredible stuff. Sure, sure, yeah, sure. no, I'm I'm into it. I never expected that I would be into. I thought it would just sailed. I thought it was over. Yeah, I was. Yeah, yeah. I it, you know, if I didn't get into it when I was a kid, I was never going to get into it as mm. adults. But. I'm into it. I'm into it. I'm excited. Have, you've never it. been to a live event, right? No. Oh, this is, See, this is, this is what will turn you in. I mean, I know you're already a fan. This yeah. is what will crystallize you. As a, as I'm so excited. Fan. What is the viewing experience in that? Because like I'm watching it live, like, uh, uh, and it's like there's commercial breaks and stuff. So like, yeah. what is the vibe? There's downtime. Like, they'll run yeah. in-house ads for like, they'll, they'll do this. Uh, this is awesome ad. Oh, they'll cool. Stuff like that. And, That's awesome. Know, little things like that. And they'll try to get you to go buy stuff. Awesome. You know, on shut WWE shop and all that jazz. Yeah. But it's like. It's a different beast. Like, uh, of course, friend of the show, Anna Sale. Uh, death, sex, and money. Saved, by the way. We, I talked about I was depressed when I got let go from its thing. Now I got saved. It's back. Thanks oh, to good. Slate. Yes. Uh, I took her to lunch recently uh, in the beginning of the year. And there we were talking. It came up that I'm doing the WWE stuff and yada, yada, yada. She's like, yeah, I, you know, I never got into it. And I'm like, I know it sounds counterintuitive, but if you wanted to understand it, you need to go. Hmm. Like, I think you can watch it and you can have a great time. And I think Mike being there to feed off of helps out a lot too, right? But like going there and like, again, you're not going to hear the commentary, right? All this different stuff. But the crowd and the energy and like, I, I always call it, it's a shared delusion, right? Yeah. Like, obviously you get that it's not real. Like, you know what I mean? That it's, it's a story you're watching. But the fact that everyone's bought in and suspending their disbelief to enjoy this product and be there, and like obviously marvel at the actual athleticism as well and all that jazz, but like it's incredible. I think yeah. I'm excited. No, this is this is gonna be a fun opportunity. This is something that I was like, I I thought through it and I did the anxiety thing of like, do I go? Do I not go? And I realized I'm gonna regret this. I need to come. Oh yeah, no, you got to be an incredible, especially deal. right now, dude. Like yeah, I I know we've talked about this a million times now, but like this road to WrestleMania is special. <sighs> and like the fact that you're coming in now, it's like, dude, I don't know if there's been a better time to get in to be able to have a fun time on the entire journey. Yeah. Now, now I'm at the point now where I'm watching this weekend. I watched four hours of elimination chamber, like just the entirety of it. Just having a great time. How many of this is awesome. Have you watched, you know, it's still working my way up to that. (laughs) You know what I mean? I want to, I did watch some untold. Some of the, okay. the documentary series. Yeah, that was, this, that was this is awesome, Jason. Yeah, this is awesome, yeah, Jason. Yeah. You know what I mean? But you know, one day, one day. Okay. Fair enough. Have <laughs> you guys watched Iron Claw yet? I did watch Iron Claw finally. What'd you think? I loved it. Yeah, I, it it was interesting because me and Jen talked about it afterwards. Had a whole debrief. Has everybody seen? Iron no, Claw? I have not. So I, oh, I, okay. last weekend, full transparency, it was between that uh, and American Fiction, which is another movie that I want to watch. I don't know which one that is. But they were. Uh, it's Jeffrey Wright. Okay. It's, uh, I think he's up for an Academy Award for it. Um, and I'm like, I was grappling between both of those movies. They're both 20 bucks to buy. Yeah. And I'm like, when are we going to do, Joey had a great idea. She was like, they should bundle all the Academy Award, like nominated movies for like 50 bucks. You get to watch like six or seven movies. That would be incredible. And I was like, we'll get on that, Joe. So we'll see if yeah, she okay, go was talk able to make that happen. Movie. <laughs> but I was, I was going back and forth between watching, um, both of those. And we ended up watching the good shepherd on netflix which okay. is a 20 year old matt damon film oh, i was gonna say I yeah thought I, okay i thought it must is that so in your universe 30 minutes into that yeah, i was yeah, like yeah, okay cool 30 minutes into that i was like eh, i should have watched iron claw but we're kind of invested in this uh Tequila broadsword says is part. iron claw depressing y'all oh yeah. my god is it depressing oh, oh my god is it depressing yeah it's fantastic like it's awesome all right I, my thing Dang. with it was in the, i'm not going to spoil anything it, obviously it follows the von eric wrestling family the dynasty if you will, out of Texas, uh, a name well known in the old school genre of wrestling, I think more than modern for sure. But it's one of those you trace the lineage and you see all the different people who came. Wrestling has more than one royal family. Exactly. But <laughs> we're I, oh man. Anyways, don't get me started. Anyways, though, um, yeah, uh, I by this it was one of those. I obviously wanted to get to theaters to see it. Memory serves. It came out around the holiday, right? And I think it was just too sticky for with the nanny being gone for me and Jen to make it happen. And so I was waiting, waiting, waiting. Yeah, day one as soon mm-hmm. as they dropped it, I, I bought it. And we watched. I think the next night. All right. But it was one it. of those that I am, especially for being late to the party on so many movies, even before uh, Ben. There's always that thing of it is. It's the fucking best. Oh my god, I sobbed at the end. Da 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 da. Mm-hmm. And then you get there, and I don't have that. And like mm-hmm. as I'm watching the beginning, I was like. Uh, are we are we going to trend towards this being a movie that actually is going to be one of those everybody hyped it up too much and i didn't yeah. love it by the end i was crying and i was like okay no they, they crushed this they crushed this. okay okay i'll watch it then i'll probably just end up that's how it. i feel about coyote ugly that i just watched for the first time last weekend <sighs> we got to talk about that <laughs> what is we gotta this? have a car- coyote ugly, coyote ugly? No. It's, what <laughs> my universe <laughs> i've never heard of this roger would, have like, roger would have been like two two years old coyote when this movie ugly came out i feel like that that and that would have made it like 
scandalous. You know what I mean? He would have been like Roger Coyote Ugly. It's like was, a Kangaroo Jack sequel. Or something? No, it was a movie based on a bar. <laughs> I think a real bar. It is right? correct. Uh, where the bartenders who generally tend to be good looking, uh, occasionally will just dance on the bar. Tyra Banks. That's oh okay. the whole crux of the movie is just that. And man, the scenes where they're dancing on top of the bar. Powerful stuff. So I've never seen. Realizing. I've never seen it. I would, it was one of those movies that I was a little kid at Blockbuster, yeah. and I'd see the the box art and be like, I shouldn't be looking. This, at this. looks like an adult movie. This looks, oh, this, okay. Yeah, he said he, it's all uh, good looking women. That's yeah. the whole shtick. And so I remember always just being like, I don't, know, I don't know about that. I'm not mature enough for this. And then now that I'm an adult, uh, Gia was like, Oh my god, we like. She saw it on Netflix or whatever. She's like, We gotta watch it. I'm like, Do we really? She's like, Yeah. Oh, I'm like, What's it about? She's like, Yeah. You know, it's one of those. Uh, we gotta save the bar movies and whatever. Yeah. And I was like, Yeah, fine, let's go. It is not. It that. is not. No. It's not that at all. There's no. The bar's not at any risk. Piper of Caribou <laughs> plays a dreamer who comes to She's the big dreamer, city right? of New York City you from heard of New it? Jersey. Oh, man, it, it's a thing where World's John apart. Goodman. <laughs> oh man, hold World's on. We're doing apart. a fucking recap. This is a recap. Wait, wait, this is an wait. official. Recap. Recap, everybody! everybody. Start the okay. timer because I want to see how how well Greg Never remembers this, this movie. Piper Parabu there is in the white tank top, right? Can you bring that back up? So <laughs> Piper Parabu. Oh, okay. I thought you. I thought that was the beginning of the movie. Okay. Yeah, oh yeah. no, 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 no. <laughs> is that what? is that uh, not Kate Beckinsale? Um, no. Uh, quarterback's <laughs> wife. Her his first wife. Uh, no. Bridget Jones is Moynihan. I don't even know who that is. I'll look it up. So I can't tell you. Well, I mean, right there, you can read the boxer. Wow, uh, anyways, so, arm, fucking so Piper Paribu lives in a little town called New Jersey. <laughs> All right. Uh, right across from the big city, the Big Apple. She dreams of being a musician, a singer-songwriter. Oh, and I love that you can tell me if um, when I'm getting it right because you just watched it for the most part. It is Bridget Moynihan. Holy crap. Uh, she works in a pizza shop. Okay. She has a burn on her arm. This will be important later when she has a conversation with the owner of the bar. The bar. Uh, she decides it's time for me to do it. I'm going to go to the big city and be a singer-songwriter, and I'm going to get signed by all the big record labels, and I'll make it. And John Goodman says, no, you won't. This is her, this is her dad, John Goodman. Oh, he works wow. in a toll booth in right. New Jersey. No, you won't. Like, your mom had dreams, too, and she's dead, so you can't have dreams. <laughs> <Right. laughs> you got you to go into toll booth and business like, like dad. No, I'm going to do it. And he is just, like, the biggest dick asshole about it where he like he won't he, he won't support her like he gives her the silent treatment for a while and uh -huh. shit but she finally leaves and he hugs her and it's like you know whatever yeah she goes to new york to start her yeah. fortune and do her whole fucking thing you know what i mean and so she gets there and gets an apartment and then she starts trying to go around and give out her demo tape it might it was a tape or a cd at this point i forget uh, I, it must be a tape. Like on the street? No, or no, just like, like, like going up, to labels and she stuff? She walks to like record companies and shit gotcha. like that. You know what I mean? Gotcha. And they none of them will give them the time of the day. I think they at one point the montage is said to that, you're unbelievable. <laughs> and I forget the one comedian from SNL is working like the desk and won't accept it. And like basically she finds out that guess what? Like they won't just take your demo thing. Yeah. You need an agent. You need representation. Yeah, yeah. So dejected, she goes home, finds out it's New York City. Somebody's broken into her house and stolen all her, <gasps> her apartment. Oh, her no. little shitty, like Peter Parker apartment yeah. for Spider Man. Stole all her shit. You know what I mean? She's like crestfallen, destroyed by it, right? And so, uh, I this is the one thing Tim will have to connect. Someone, maybe it's just somebody at a record label. Yeah, I think finally gives her the advice of like, listen, you 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 can't just do this. You need to do this. How do you do? How do I do that? You start going to open mics and try to get discovered, kind of shit, right? And like, so go to these places and do it. She goes to this one bar, and there's this Ozzy, 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 Oi, Oi, Oi guy working there, right? And she mistakes him as being what? 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 I just like I. He's spot on. You're spot on. When was the last time you watched this movie? Oh, I have no fucking idea. <laughs> Holy decades, shit. decades. Uh, he's Beautiful a mind. good looking young guy, and she thinks he's the owner, right? Whatever. And he starts playing into it or whatever. Yeah. And then it turns out, because we as the audience had already seen him, I think, in the kitchen getting shit on by the <laughs> chef or like the owner of the bar or whatever. This is crazy. And then he comes out and she, they think he, so he's like, oh, Mr. Whatever his fucking name is, right? And so he's like leaning into it. And then that fucking guy comes back out and shits on him again. And she's like, oh my God, I just embarrassed myself and did all this. And he's like, no, no, but I'll try to help you and yada, 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 whatever. And they strike up a little romance mm. thing, okay? This will be a through line through. Don't worry about it. Yeah. So, um, f she's finally like, well, I need to get a fucking job. 
You know what I mean? And she's just looking for jobs and it doesn't go well. I think she shows up with a cover letter. I think she might get something sprayed on her shirt at some point. Not, not any weird, but like spills coffee on her shirt or something. Maybe I'm making mm -hmm. that part up. But eventually she ends up, she's got nowhere else to turn, Raj. Nowhere else to look. So she goes to this Coyote Ugly, right? Coyote but Ugly. It's closed up. It's locked up. She knocks on the door. No one's there. But she comes around and there's this woman, there's this uh, opening in the, f the ground of New York, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. And they're loading in beer and shit or whatever and kegs. And there's a woman there who was the other woman there who's been in a bunch of stuff. I can't remember. Oh, she was in History of Violence. She uh, had no panties on in the cheerleader outfit with Whoa. Viggo Morganson. Oh. <laughs> Oh, it's, uh, she owns Mar the bar. Maria Bello. Sure, Maria Bello She's owns awesome. the bar. Well, uh -huh. we don't know that right now. Yeah. So she is. So Piper Paribu's talking to her or whatever, right? And then she senses she might get to be getting jerked around like Ozzy, Ozzy, Ozzy did. And then she's like, she says, she's, she's Australian. If you didn't understand, okay. yeah, 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 yeah. And so Maria Bello is like jerking around for a bit and kind of being. She's she's the gritty tough New Yorker lady. I don't. I own a bar and I yeah. shit or whatever. And she sees the scar or whatever. And like, yeah, from since I've been pulling pizza since I was seventeen or some shit like that. She says, it's like, ah, blah, blah. she says something fucking weird about that. I don't remember. But anyways, it's like, all right, cool. You know, come back to the bar. You can have an audition tonight. Well, I just I need to stop here, Greg. Yeah. Like. The pizza burn thing, all of that did happen. <laughs> like, it's not a plot point. That's it. That's all it was. Oh, like, okay. That was she's the only the time in the beginning saying goodbye to people, and they want her to, like, write her name on the wall or put her dollar on the wall or some shit, and she might do it. And then, yeah, it's this one reference, but it stuck with me to connect It's you. just so, so, so small. But is, is that why she's hot? Well, she's hired because, or, no, like, brought into no. the thing because of the burn? Because she's like, oh, she, you, you're tough or whatever. No, it's just a line of dialogue. Like, like, you got what I don't think it's yeah. in this conversation, yeah. but eventually later in the movie when Maria Bello is uh, it's amazing uh, is Greg hasn't gotten to the point of the movie. Yeah. <laughs> it took us so long to get to the bar. You know the whole, hey, I'm on a journey and everyone's enjoying themselves. Make sure. some fucking popcorn, all I'm right? Seeing I'm seeing the vision. I forget if it's this conversation. I don't think it is. I think it's way later when she's so, super softened. And Maria Bello is like, <laughs> I, know, I know when she's like, because oh, she's like from fucking whatever, Hackensack, New Jersey, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, or whatever. Yeah. And fucking she's Hackensack. like, I, I knew it from a mile away. I'm fucking Tulipsy, Minnesota or whatever, indicating that she used to be a soft, fragile person until New York hardened her. You know yeah. what I mean? Right. Anyways. Jersey known for not hardening. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Just yeah, exactly. soft people exactly. everywhere. Jersey the easiest place in the planet to live, <laughs> right? So uh, Piper Paribu comes in that night, right, whatever, and she gets there and all the Tyra Banks and the other women are all there, whatever, and, and she comes in and she's dressed very nice but conservative or whatever and the other blonde woman in there is like no honey not like this or whatever so he yanks up her shirt uh, ties it off above the navel you gotta and does sell all this you gotta different. be selling yeah yeah mm -hmm. and then she sees selling. coyote ugly not coyote pretty yeah and so they see people you know are all up there and they're like uh makes no sense they're like they're dancing on the thing and she's in over her head yeah. and she's and like, she's working there right she's yeah. not yeah. just so doing this is, working what, there very this is what they do this is the vibe this is the oh, whole okay. point of the movie is to have four beautiful women dancing on a bar getting wet Gotcha. And all the guys are like, this is the best bar ever. Yeah. And yeah, they all, they're making their way, you know, in the world today. And it's yeah. taking everything they got. Uh, real quick one for you. Bill Murray's brother is the the bouncer at the company. Okay. Ugly. Yeah. You'd recognize him from Groundhog Day. He's the, he's the larger fellow. And then also the show Herman's Head that he was on as well. The older brother? No. Uh, younger. One of the youngers. I mean, he, Bill Murray's got like... Did you know he had a brother? Brothers. No, not at all. Yeah. Not at all. He's, I thought he was he an has, only child. He has, not Brian Doyle Murray. Okay. I was going to say, he has... Three brothers that are that you would probably recognize from things because they're all actors. Mm. Like, did you know that you put, Kevin? Can you pull up a picture of Brian Doyle Murray? Brian Doyle Murray. You probably remember him as you will, you the will, mayor. This, this is going to blow you away. Of Groundhog Day. It's, oh, you know the psychiatrist guy. in uh, Ghostbusters 2 when they're committed. These are big deals. And of course, from the, vo <laughs> the vocal performance of Ghostbusters, the video game back in the day. Okay. So you've seen this oh, guy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. He's, Kevin, can you bring up a picture oh, from. from shit. Maybe t 10 years ago oh, or 20 shit. years ago. <laughs> From like Wayne's World. Just type in Wayne's World. There you go. Yeah. He's yeah. Seen this guy much time. So oh, he's that always that absolutely guy. the brother. Isn't that wild? Of Bill Murray. That's insane. And then I'll never forget one of my favorite movies that it just kind of came and went was, and I apologize. We'll get back to you. Oh, I don't mind. I'm having a fun time. Uh, was uh, Moving Violations. Did you ever watch that? No, I don't know. Moving it was one of his younger brothers leading role in that. Oh. And it's about, <laughs> it's one of these weird movies. That's about a uh, the, the police have uh, are in cahoots with the the driving instructors sure. to give people tickets to like sure. drive them to movie violations <laughs> and then give them so many that they they impound their cars and then sell the cars. It's wow, cool. it's, it's a wild top. '80s movie. You guys should definitely watch it. That's awesome. So, um, 
she is in over her head. Is she's like, is this like a strip bar kind of thing? She doesn't say this, but she's saying it with her eyes. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is clearly like they're selling sex here. Right. This isn't this isn't my pizza I'm place back in New Jersey or whatever. So she is like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm out. I'm gonna leave. And then this little like kerfuffle between two fucking really horny, just rock hard dudes because they're looking at all these women. They get in a fight or whatever, yeah. right? And so on her way out, she's like runs over and she's like, break it up, guys, blah, blah, blah. Here's some money, drinks on me. And they're like, oh, okay. And they like fuck, we're dumbass meatheads. We gotta literally they are fighting each other and she just stops it. Like she wow. is like the solution to this. And so talent. she they go over to buy the bar and she leaves. And then the Maria Bello comes over and she's like, Whoa, Jersey. You just fucking did something. I was insane. Like you do got this stuff. You got the stuff. It was a tryout. She's like, you know, come back tomorrow or whatever yeah, the yeah. fuck it is. You know what I mean? Wow. So she got the job or whatever. You calmed these two testosterone fueled assholes. You down, couldn't do any of this and stuff. And now they're still wanted. in the bar. Yeah, right? and you yeah. gave them free well, drinks. God forbid the bouncer throw them out of the fucking bar like they're he, supposed I forget, to. There was some. They gave some plot of why he was distracted because he's a good guy. The bouncer. Sure. Yeah. There, there's a whole thing going on here raj where uh this they, they set it up that this this young ingenue doesn't know what's going on and she thinks that it's more of like a smutty type situation but like they make it very clear that's not what's going on there's levels of respect here that you don't see anywhere else like this type of fighting it doesn't happen here we don't do that here because everyone here understands what's going on and like we're here we're all here for the, the greater good yeah what's going on <laughs> We're here they're for just hospitality, dancing? you know? Yeah, they're just oh, bartenders. They're, they're bartenders, and then they get up okay. there. Yeah, okay. like, what the shot it's they like keep... a show. The shot uh -huh. that you saw with them spraying the water was... This is amazing. When anybody asks for water at the bar... The, the bartenders go, do we serve water? They ring a bell or use a bowl. Do we serve water in this bar? Hell no, H2O. And then they spray everybody with water, right? <laughs> Which can't be legal. I feel like you no. got to give people water. If yeah, they but want also, it. like, Absolutely how many detailed. times a night can you do this before yeah, you can right? give someone a cup of water? <laughs> right. <laughs> You get so the anyways, same asshole coming in ordering water five times a day. You're like, we can't, we can't. Yeah, do that. that'd be that. So guy. Piper Parabu then now has the job. She shows up. Uh, again, she can't spin the bottles. So there's eventually a montage of her learning to spin the bottles and do all the bar tricks or whatever. But night one, right, she's back there. And the other girls are being nice enough. There's one really mean one. The one I think is the quarterback's wife you were talking about. Bridget she's Moynihan. really mean to her or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, but then uh, at some point, guess what happens? A guy I'm comes up and says, can I have a, a water? And she goes, does we serve water in this? And she sprays, really just him. Not that, not the fun version. She's like, blasts him. And then the fucking, what's the, Sid? What is the owner's name? It's I something. could not Sid, tell you, man. I always call her Sid. Maria Bella runs over. She's like, oh, no. And she's like, he, asked her, well, he can have whatever he wants. Huh? He's the fire inspector. We're like, oh, oh no. But no. well, then he's used to water. Oh. Yeah. But they smooth it over, and they don't shut the bar down. Or okay, like that's that. nice. Uh, and so then uh, I think... I forget where, but she bumps back into Ozzy, Ozzy, oi, 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 right? And she, like, you know, it's like night. She's worked there, like, a day. Yeah. And she, they have, like, the little flirty thing, flirty thing. And she, and he's like, she, he's like, can I see you again? And she's like, coyote ugly. And he's like, what, what's that? Or, oi, what's that? And she's like, if you want to know, you'll find, and like, why, like, and he just comes to the bar the next day because he fucking can use Bing or whatever yeah, the fuck. Yeah, yeah. And just ask Jeeves for when this movie happens. So what's weird too about this movie is the genre of it. Mm -hmm. It's like everything he's saying. Like, what would you think the genre of this? It's like movie? a comedy, right? Like it's, kind like of like a rom com. Light. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. just not like it's not a comedy. Like it's 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 like it's like, even described as like a romance. And I'm like, it's more of a serious drama. It it's pretty weird where it's like it's <laughs> not. It's not nearly funny enough to be a rom com. Uh huh. But like, are they trying to be a rom com? No, no, not at all. Like, watch it's really movie. just a coming of age it, story about mm -hmm. Piper Parabu wanting to break into the record industry yeah. and doing it by dancing on a bar and eventually singing. Because that's and what happens. Spoiler okay. alert, right? So Ozzy, Ozzy, Ozzy shows up at the bar, shows up at the bar, right, or whatever. Yeah. And I'm a little foggy on this part. Again, I haven't seen it probably in two decades. <laughs> but I believe what happens is they blow a fuse, the power goes out. There's a blackout in New York, something to that effect. And now you've got. <laughs> <laughs> now you've got this room of like 150 fucking horny ass drunk angry guys right and they're there's no power there's no beer <laughs> like, oh, they're getting madder and madder so piper parabu climbs on the bar and sings oh and her that was the first time she sings in this movie we we got I hints of this is their first time before. performing in this front is of like people. yeah, yeah I I gotcha. but also uh, an important thing you're, you're missing on the tyra banks subplot Thank you. Yeah, Which, I was going to ask about Tyra. So she Ty was going to go. She, let me, before you tell yeah, me what it actually it. was, she was there, right? But it was like the dovetail experience where uh, Piper Perry who shows up, but Tyra's on her send off. Uh, she's going to go be a model? I forget what she's going to do. I don't even do. know. But yeah, that, that's the important thing is the Tyra Banks was like, 
like there is an open space for like an all star here because like their best is leaving, and so it was like the perfect setup. So Tyra comes back every once in a while, like for motivation, but it is it's, oh she's like gone, gone. It's yeah, in this movie, gotcha. Yeah, okay. I mean she's yeah she comes back as yeah, like she comes back in like a suit. Is she gonna be a lawyer? I think she comes she comes back in a suit at one point. I was they, playing they a lot. Her of they have, they, she gets up there to dance at some point. Um, so then now she's singing on the bar and having a great time and really feeling herself, right? And Ozzy 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 shows up and one of the guys who's a regular, like, I don't think he gropes her, but like he like touches her, but she's not offended by it. She it's kind of part of the show. Sure. But he runs over there and starts beating the shit out of that guy. And she comes down and he she's like, yo, he's fucking the regular. And like they might have already fucked at this point, Ozzy Ozzy and her, I forget. Because mm -hmm. he she is shy about singing. And so the way he gets over gets her over being shy about singing is to bring her to her, his apartment where he has a bunch of cardboard cutouts of like actors and shit. And then in the dark, he blends in with them and she sings and plays the guitar nude. Right? That's all accurate. Yeah. yeah. What the fuck, Greg? <laughs> it's a good movie. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> really this is you. crazy. This is insanity. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that that's like part of it, but that fuels her, uh, and then that's a, and then so then he's not like he's got like this weird ownership over. They are, they're in a relationship, and he sure. just reads the signal and yada yada yada. Uh, and then this fuels her to go buy a new MacBook, where she can then she starts making her music and she comes up mm. with this song. She's an FL fight studio. Can't, can't fight, fight the, the moonlight, moonlight, Roger. You heard the song? No. Oh, you have. Yeah, you. Have. Yeah, you definitely have. It. She oh, made this song. The star. Well, in I mean in. In the universe, gotcha. in their time was this was this the song that was supposed to be like the movie song? Yeah, song for the movie. Yeah. So it's it's by Leanne Rhymes. Okay, yeah, okay. And so I am like, oh my god, it's Leanne Rhymes song. I love this song. This is great. Cause you know, cause you know. Oh, I know that song. Yeah, yeah. Can't fight the moon. So she, there's a whole montage of her doing this. And, and in this universe, is are they just like dubbing over her? Like, no, she's doing it. She's Leanne Rhymes comes to the very end. So we'll yeah, oh. Leanne Rhymes shows up at the fucking end. So anyways, <laughs> she makes the discs and then starts submitting them to open mic nights, right? And uh, she isn't getting bites, but she is. Now stick with me. I left out an important plot point from way back. Wait, can I? Did, yeah. Is this an open mic bar that she's no no in? okay so she just, is this not. is just a random bar that she's just got a job at just yeah. to make some ends I mean, she the, starts the, yeah exactly the, the okay. singing thing only happens because of the blackout and then they're like oh you're great we should add this to the repertoire gotcha so we can do this now. okay um so one of the plot points I missed out on and I should have told you about earlier was on one of the Ozzy 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 Oi 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 first dates with her right yeah. there she he the, you know he's like you know, the, the fucking He's like Nick. He's out in the nightlife. He knows everybody kind of shit, right? You know what I mean? Everyone. So at some point... I'll introduce you. They, on the date, <laughs> they like... He's like, wait, I got to make a pit stop and like stops at a bar. A pizza place, I think, actually. And uh, he walks over and like, you know, dabs up the guy, right? Or dab, 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 dab. up the guy. And uh, the guy's like, oh, cool. And he reaches under the counter and gives him this big brown paper bag. And he takes the brown paper bag. And he's like, and he kind of puts it under his like coat or maybe like, it looks very bad. And he comes out and she's like, listen, straight up, like I won't be with a drug addict or if you're dealing drugs or anything. I don't want anything illegal. And he's like, whoa, you got it all wrong. And he opens up the bag and inside is an, ep uh, an episode, an issue of Amazing Spider-Man. And it's the first appearance of the Punisher. Whoa. And the guy's like, hey, it's the first appearance of the Punisher. I've been saving up for it. It's a big deal. And she's like, you collect comics? And he's like, yeah, I'm also fucking hot in Australia, whatever. Yeah. So anyways, now jump to, she's trying to get these open mics, but it's not really happening for her. What turns out he, what happens, Aussie guy goes and gives, or no, I'm sorry. Shit, I fucked it up. Aussie guy goes, so before she gets her confidence, Aussie guy it makes a deal with a guy who runs whatever nightclub for her to be on stage and she flakes she freaks she has stage fright she doesn't do it right and the guy's like and, he, and he, she leaves and he, the guy Ozzy's like oh sorry we gotta go and he's like well we still had a deal whatever and he's like oh and he gives him the comic so uh, Ozzy guy like that was the deal to get her on set but she fucked it up so anyway she gets her confidence she gets her thing she starts doing the open mics on her own she's doing her own shit um so I'm Sorry, I'm rewinding the movie and fast forwarding. In all of this, I left out, of course, that, you know, her estranged relationship with John Goodman. Yeah. Right? Uh, she has been giving him updates that, you know, she's doing this and she's being cagey about working at the bar or Coyote Ugly or whatever. Uh, do you know why it's Coyote Ugly, by the, ugly, no. by the way? You know what Coyote Ugly is? No. In the very beginning, uh, Maria Bello gives the speech to Piper Paribu as well. And it's basically because she asked, like, why do you name the bar Coyote Ugly? And she's like, oh, Coyote Ugly is when you're so hammered and you go home with somebody and then you wake up in the morning and they're on your arm and you look at them and they're so ugly 
that you'd rather gnaw off your li- your limb Jesus. like a coyote, so they're coyote ugly. Mm-hmm. Is this a real term, or did I they make yeah, this coy- up? No, no, they made it up. I'm sorry, it's a real term that they popularized. I had never heard they, of it prior to this. Yeah, I think they. I I, I don't think they made it okay. up, but I don't know 100. You know what I mean? It's like chicken or the egg situation. You exactly. never know. Well, I mean, I'm sure we can Google, but you know what I mean. Yeah, who has the technology? No. Anyways, oh, so she's been eventually. John, she's up there dancing. She's wet or whatever from the water or whatever. Yeah. She looks out and John Goodman's there with a very <gasps> dis- different disapproving look, oh. right? And so he takes off, and I forget how. It, <laughs> this is crazy. I don't. Like, oh, I didn't expect damn. him to come. I, it's a long trek from New Jersey to oh, New it's York. So it's a long far, time. So, so far. So far. So, far. Dude, so eventually they, they make up. nice enough. Maybe no. She's he's still giving her the silent treatment. She's got her best friend back home, who's like a sister to her. That is, she's in popular things as well, but she's always like that side character. Oh, I know. You'd exactly see her, about. and you'd be like, "Oh, it's that one." She's in um, Yellow Jackets. Okay, that doesn't help me. <laughs> right, help <laughs> the, me. You know what her I mean? Her name is <laughs> Melanie Anyways, it, Linsky. I think is what okay. Looking for, oh, right? Last of Us. Oh, okay. Yes, nailed it. That helps me. There Thank you, you Tim. <sighs> Anyways, okay. Uh, eventually, <laughs> it builds to all right. She's got another actual booked open mic gig thing. Yeah, she's gonna go. Kind of the first popular film from the. It takes its name from slang for one night stand. So they didn't invent it, is what we're saying. They did not invent this. It says it's from the yeah. popular like. film. No, that, it says it references. Oh my film. bad. My that's bad. definitely one of those where like somebody said it a couple times and like, I think and then they made it a thing. Sure, that was never really. A so thing. at least they didn't make it all the way. Now it's time for her big actual thing. Her, uh, you know, she. I freak. Oh no, I think I guess it is the fight. With the bar when Ozzy Ozzy fights that guy. Tim, correct me once I st- lay it out if I'm wrong. I think it might actually be that fight that kind of does break up Piper Paraboo and Ozzy Ozzy. But like they're still like, they want to get together. Yeah. Like, this is There's not nearly as much conflict between them as you'd expect. That's okay. what I'm saying. It's like the genre of the movie is pretty weird because it's like, it is kind of just a romance that just yeah. works. There's not much conflict at There's all. There's no like that- moment where they're not dating and they're not talking to each other not and they come really. back. His name is just O'Donnell. <laughs> Yeah, O'Donnell. That oh, is it's Kevin name. O'Donnell. Okay, Kevin O'Donnell. Whatever calls him O'Donnell, you're right. O'Donnell. Uh, but anyways, then it's the she gets the thing because yeah, that's what happened. They they break up or whatever, take time away from each other, and this is when she gets her shit together and like actually does all the stuff. And then it's she's got a big big event, a big open mic or just a performance or whatever. And so it's like one of those everybody's gonna come out and support her kind of thing. And so like John, she she's made up with John Goodman. And she's in the car with him. And I don't know why you want to talk. I think I was gonna say, I don't know why this sticks with me. Clearly I know the entire fucking movie, but what really sticks with me is that they're driving from New Jersey to New York for the thing. It's her, it's Goodman and it's the best friend or whatever. And she's still got stage fright. She's not over. And so she goes through, they're coming up on the toll booth and John Goodman's like, light them up. Like, you know, he has one of these things. And like, Spider-Man uh, crane. Yeah, moment. Yeah, yeah. And like, yeah, all the, the fucking toll booth thing. But she flips out and turns around or whatever. And like, she's scared to go. And then she I, I gets the nerve to go. And he's like, do it again, boys. And they fucking do that. And then, so she goes there. Oh, he's a toll booth operator. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. They, okay she it. goes there. She gets on stage. It's a, and now Piper Paraboo's character, whatever it's fucking called. And she goes to play, right? And she's like, freaks out and da da. And what happens? O'Donnell is there, even though they're broken up, turns off all the lights. So now it's like when she's sang in his bedroom, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And she's able to start. Can't find he's the able to light. fucking yeah. crush the lights exactly the right point in the song to do it. Lights come up. She fucking crushes. She's amazing. She comes off stage to celebrate their family. And some guys are like, hey, I'm big time record executive guy. We should have a conversation bullshit kind of thing. Blah, yeah. blah, blah. And so it's like everybody's together. And yeah, and kissy, kissy, and blah, blah, blah. And then it's like you get the jump of like, I forget if they even do a three months later or whatever, but it is, they're doing like the record, the single release party at Coyote Ugly. And yeah, Leanne Rimes is there because she's the one who pressed it to vinyl. Just she's singing the on the, it. the uh, stage. It's a bar. But then isn't, isn't it that then she's like on her way out like Tyra Banks was? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and then, then the new girl, girl comes, comes in. in that, yeah, yeah, new girl comes in. With uh, another dream okay, of okay. else. And so it's just that sort of story. It's like poetry, it rhymes. It's, it's like, it's like, yeah. it's, oh, okay. All right, well, ugly from, that was a great movie. I would put that on my letterbox right now. I feel yeah. like I can review that. That's, I, I'll be if you want to blow off you. Raw and watch that here, I'm down. <laughs> <laughs> I would actually do that. I'll be honest with you. I think Greg's retelling of that was more entertaining than the actual That's not true. movie itself. It stuck with me. How much is Tyra Banks in this movie? Because I'm a big fan of Because she was pretty fairly popular back then, right? Oh, she back was then. She Tyra Tyra. Yeah, no, that was, that was like her. the... Well, I mean, she didn't have the show yet, but she was like a supermodel back then. Yeah, she was a supermodel, yeah. But that was during the, that was when the era was like of supermodels were. That was when you supreme. couldn't throw a potato down Main Street and not hit a fucking supermodel. I mean, Kate Moss going through the trash. You know what I mean? They're oh, everywhere. So, 
<laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is a great time to remind you about the Kind of Funny <laughs> membership. Of course, if you want each and every episode of the show ad-free, if you want my daily vlog, if you want to watch the other podcasts and this podcast live as we record on. <laughs> you should get the kind of funny membership on patreon or youtube but guess what you're not using your membership benefits right now so here's a word from our sponsors this episode's brought to you by avatar braving the elements we know you love talking about all things tv film and pop culture with us so there's another podcast that we think you're going to enjoy it's called avatar braving the elements and it's nickelodeon's official companion podcast to avatar the last airbender Y'all already know Barrett loves Avatar. He thinks it's one of the best coming of age heroes journeys out there that perfectly blends enticing action, great comedy and social commentary that's all backed by great art style and an iconic soundtrack. Each week, host Janet Varney, the voice of Korra, and Dante Bosco, the voice of Zuko, rewatch every episode of The Last Airbender. They're joined by special guests like the cast, super fans, and even the creators of Avatar, Michael DiMartino and Brian Konitzko, for a deep dive and behind the scenes look into the Avatar verse you can't get anywhere else. Whether you're a longtime bender or new to the series, jump into the epic world of Avatar with Avatar Braving the Elements. Listen to Avatar Braving the Elements on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcast. Y'all need to check out Kind of Funny Game Showdown, our weekly video game trivia game show. You can watch live on YouTube or on Twitch every Friday at 11 a.m. Pacific time. But now, thanks to popular demand, Kind of Funny Game Showdown is available on podcast services. Whether you're listening on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, or anywhere else, please subscribe and rate the show five stars. It really helps us get Kind of Funny out there. And we couldn't thank you enough. We aim to make this a video only show. So many of the games we best enjoyed watching on YouTube. But despite that, enough of you guys asked for audio versions so we're making that happen anyways of course that also means if you have the kind of funny membership on patreon you will now also get the audio version of the show ad free no matter how you're watching or listening to kind of funny game showdown thank you and if you haven't checked it out yet there is no better time than now we're already many episodes into the show so you can catch up now on youtube or the brand new podcast version of the show if you love what we do, please get the Kind of Funny membership on Patreon or on YouTube to get the show ad-free. If you just want to support us for free, please subscribe and rate Kind of Funny Game Showdown on your favorite podcast service now. I'm just saying, mm. back in the day. But like the, uh, the concept of the supermodel is like gone though, right? It's yeah, sort of not the super influencers. now. Yeah, I'm just saying that was like the final era. Like Tyra Banks might have been the last era of like the supermodel yeah. before well, it switched no, over to like the Kim Kardashians who were just the massive yeah. moguls everywhere. Sure. Right? It was an era in between though. That which was that what Tyra kind of was a part of, but you figure like America's Marissa Miller model. and right? uh, Chrissy T. That era of Dagon. Oh sure. I guess you have them. You have the Victoria's Secret model. Yeah, you have the Victoria's Secret model. But the Dallas problem there is that that gets that gets hard because like people Supermodels graduated into the Victoria's Secret thing. You know what I mean? Where Tyra Banks was a Victoria's Secret. Because Giselle, Giselle was an angel. Yeah. yeah. And then she was, she was also Giselle. Like, she was of that era of, like, being huge. And then they hired her. The, the, the angels were, like, the megastars of the, of the models that they all just put together. as like was, like, an like all-star team, right? Yeah. Yeah. But then there was America's Next Top Model that I feel like that. But even that, that, I think that starts blending, right? Yeah, Where it, it is like an in. influencer. You're you're no longer. Jo- I remember yeah. what what me and Nick are talking about from the, the sacred texts from the old days when we right. had to write everything in stone was like only seeing people in ads like, on in paper. Right. Yeah. You get these things called magazines. Mm. It was like the Cindy Crawfords, the yeah, Ella yeah, Pearsons, yeah, 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 yeah. the like. They were just everywhere, but they were just supermodels. That's what their job was. Heidi Occasionally, Klum. Heidi, Heidi Klum, Klum was another one. Occasionally, you'd, they, you'd see we them pop the up Klum. In, oh. in a movie or something like that. Or like Elle McPherson was in like a Batman movie. Cindy Crawford did that terrible movie Batman with forever. one of the one of the Baldwin brothers, who's I think it was either Billy or Steven. Unnecessary Roughness is well, no, that was Kathy Ireland. That was Kathy Ireland, and she but she was awesome with that. But yeah. can we talk about Necessary Roughness? I th- 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 honestly one of those I don't re- remember much of. It's another one. Well, start from the Let beginning. <laughs> Uh, I forget what what team it is. It's Kansas or one of those backwater teams <laughs> back there, right? And they are having a bad season. They need a quarterback, right? And it turns out that Scott Bakula has one season of eligibility left, as does Simbad. <laughs> yes. <laughs> they get yes. both of them to come back on this team of ragtag, like, uh, you know, people. And then they need a kicker. And oh man, they can't find a kicker worth a damn. But on the fee- over there on the female soccer team, Kathy Ireland's a badass kicking soccer balls out of the fucking oh. stadium. So they get her on the team. That's a big subplot. 
because yeah. she's a female playing in the. Does in this the sound world. at all like the replacements, ladies and gentlemen? It's a, I mean, it's pretty much the exact same movies, Replace. except the replacements. Keanu Reeves. Yeah. Remember? Oh, damn. I, Let me tell you I'm about not that. Up on Reeves. There was a cartoon named The Replacements on Disney Channel when I was a kid. So that's the only replacements I know. I'll recap the replacements later. Thank you. Uh, long story short, they end up winning. The whole what thing. I remember. Scott Bakula's high, I think Scott Bakula's college girlfriend Scott is now a professor there. And so she sees them and that's they re awesome. rekindle their, their relationship because he's the, high, he's the quarterback now. Yeah. In the same way, you're like <laughs> Coyote Ugly. You'd see the box and like that was. I, I don't remember it, but I remember the scuttlebutt was like <laughs> necessary roughness had a shower scene that Kathy, I like because the whole team showering because usually it's dudes, right? But Kathy Island was in the shower. Room, oh. like, so they didn't and, have, yeah, they didn't have co-ed. And I remember that was like the thing on the, the junior high playground about necessary roughness. Mm -hmm. I don't think I ever actually watched the movie. I think the scene's more endearing than that. I think there's a moment where she's like, I don't know, like I'll just shower with the guys, I guess, because I'm one of the team. And then the, the guys all realize after they have accepted her because she's a great kicker, they they like quarter off the shower for it. They're like, no one goes in there when she's like, she can shower for however long she wants to. We're like, sure. Because they're like her. Um, they're polite. It's the guys. No, it's the um, it's the defensive line. Yeah. Because they're her defensive line. Sure. They're like, no one's fucking with her. And they, yeah. Like, they yeah, yeah. it off, which is cool. Now I'm getting it confused Matter with, I was going to say the other kicker who is Reese Ifens. Who was in Necessary the Lizard? Yeah, the lizard. He plays a crazy. Oh, no, no, in the replacements. <laughs> the replacements. That's so right. let me tell you about the replacements. <laughs> replacements Roger. I'll give you the brief yeah, version. The, the NFL teams go on strike. Okay. So a bunch of people, a bunch of scabs. they do scabs. We're like, we're still going to do the season, so we're going to bring all these different people. And so Gene Hackman comes in okay. to coach the team. Keanu uh, Reeves comes in to be QB number one. It's a similar situation of like, he washed out because of something that wasn't his fault or whatever, I think. You know what I mean? Or whatever. And so yeah, then they had a they they needed a kicker, so they found this alcoholic Brit to come yeah. in and be who, from soccer. You know what I mean? Who's yeah, playing yeah. literally his same character that he played in Notting Hill? He is like the same crazy kind of character. And so yeah, he comes in, but he's got a gambling debt, so like they want him to throw the game at the you know the championship game because what happens, of course, eventually is you know, that's the cover of it. Great cover. When you want to go see this flick, <laughs> I love that. By the way, there's three leads in this. They just give Keanu Reeves and Gene Hackman. They didn't even <laughs> they didn't even title her at all. And so. Uh, what happens is, you know, right before uh, the championship game, I forget if they settle the entire strike or just Q the QB number one, like their Tom Brady, who's a dick, is like, I'm coming back. Yeah. So he comes back, but Gene Hackman doesn't want to play him, but da da da, you know what I mean, or whatever. And eventually, obviously, Keanu Reeves goes, and then we could be heroes just for one day. Is he saying that? Do no, no, the the wild the wildflowers, wallflower, wallflowers thing. Oh, right? okay. Do you remember how uh, Necessary Roughness ends? No, I don't remember okay, anything about so, the movie other than the shower. Thing. So they go to get, in the beginning of it, they go to get Scott Bakula on his farm, and he's like, runs a farm because he's in, like in his late 30s, 40s. Yeah, yeah. And he's throwing, he's throwing passes at a, at a dummy that's got a jersey that's like number 88. And then at the very end of the movie, in order to like make the la the final pass to win their whatever yeah, yeah, bowl that they're champion. in or whatever. He looks over and who does he see? 88. 88. Nice. And he fucking tags this kid. <laughs> and it's like this little <laughs> tiny guy that's like just wants to impress his dad. It's kind of like a Rudy story. Yeah, 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 yeah. Great fucking movie. That's Great really movie. Cool, man. Movies are cool. They, I love it. Are cool. I mean, you started yeah. off by by saying, hey, we should remake Major League. More people should just go back and watch Major see, League. See, again, and that it was my whole thing. Great. I was, and that's, that class. was that's what I where the conversation with Khalif went is that mm. he was like, we need I, I, forget, I think he said remake. And I was like, do we really need a remake? He's like, well, they could come back, and that's where we got into the whole thing. Well, it's funny because my because Mike had never seen Major League, so as part of one of our '80s and '90s movie watch along, I was like, you should watch this; it's a sports classic. And he was blown away by how good it is. But you have it's actually a very well like heartfelt comedy about these guys, basically all of whom are having like one last shot at greatness because they get brought back into the. Do you know made the cut? I Major do League? not. I'm gonna. Is I'll this? Just, I'm not gonna say the whole. I, plot. I think I'm mixing it up with the with basketball. <laughs> Yeah. Very different. I'm movies. so with you on that. <laughs> yeah, Major League. First we, get, first we get the, first we get the khakis. Then we get the money. <laughs> then we get the chicks. Major League is baseball. Uh, Never seen that either. Is Wesley Snipes <laughs> basketball? I just know. I just know the names, and I just mix these two movies up. I don't know why. The, the New Orleans Jazz league. moved to Utah, where they don't allow music. <laughs> it's awesome. Like for real, if you okay. like South Park, go watch basketball because okay. it's you know it's yeah. Matt and Trey made this. Movie. I just know that was like an oddity that they did that. I never yeah. know if it was good or bad. It was one of those. I mean, I know Team America. I watched what I'll I like tell that. you is I don't know. In college, it was the funniest sure. shit ever, and it fell. Oh, into, I'm sure it's wildly offensive. Oh, 100. Yeah. But it fell into that cult classic, like Fucking badass. Bro. Oh, this is nobody understood this at the time in the theaters. Yeah, but in reality, it's hilarious. So, sorry. 
I'll just tell you this before, I, and then I'll let go of Major League. The concept is Kansas. The, and this is the Cleveland Indians at the time is the name of the team. Yeah, gets the owner dies. His his like third or fourth wife takes over. She's not very nice. She wants to move the team, but in order to do that, the, there's a clause in the contract that they have to finish dead last. So she fires the entire team and brings in a bunch of like people she knows suck. Just the worst people. Just the losers. It's like Charlie Sheen, Wesley Snipes, Corbin Burns. Ted Lasso. It's no, because Ted Lasso, they were good players. Okay. Yeah. This yeah, they yeah. literally it, it, Ted Lasso, if they fired the whole team, yeah. And and brought in a bunch of people that just weren't. On really purpose, good. they just brought it. So they, they catch on to that and they go, well, We only have one choice is to win the whole fucking thing. And they get they they gel together as a team. And end up. And this know. is not a parody. I just thought this <clears throat> Charlie Sheen. I don't know. I it's a calm. Hot show. Okay. No, this is a legit. But this is like a legitimate. This is the thing people don't understand. It's a legit great sports film. Gotcha. It's also a comedy. Yeah. But it's the cast is ridiculous. Like you, everyone on this team is someone Corbin that you've Bernstein. seen. In, Corbin Bernstein, uh, uh, Tom Berenger, the guy that uh, own Tom Berenger. the guy that played the president in the first season of Twenty Four, who's the All State guy. Yes, uh, fuck you, Jobu. I'll yeah, do it myself. He's that also in great. seventeen Sniper movies. Remember I mean, the franchise yeah. Sniper? Well, that's Tom Berenger right there, Sniper. Sniper friend. Um Anyway, great film. If you've never watched it, go back and watch it. Hell yeah. I've never seen any of these movies. No, I would watch Cody I Ugly for the first time. But Tim, we should do an interview series based on this podcast. All yeah. the movies we've watched. <laughs> All the bad sports movies we've Fraud. watched here. Talking about remakes, there's something that I saw at the gym on the TV that kind of blew my mind that I just, I want to, I think you, you, will, you will get a kick out of this. They're remaking Deal or No Deal. Mm. Call it Deal or No Deal Island. <laughs> Oh, it's it's hosted by uh, Joe Manganiello. That's his name, right? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Deathstroke. Yeah, Deathstroke. Not and yet. it's Survivor mixed with Deal or No Deal. Great. And they're on an island, and like they drop these fucking cases out the sky, and then they have to find the cases, That's and awesome. then they play That's Deal awesome. or No Deal. And at the ending, one person will play Deal or No Deal for potentially like up to two hundred million dollars, because every episode is like a million dollars or some crazy like that. Awesome. So yeah, what, what, what was the parody where they were like? The case is full of gold. <laughs> and it, it cuts to the all the models holding the cases, and one can just barely can't even hold it. Up. Yeah, yeah, I forget yeah, what movie that. I is. forget that too. Deal or No Deal, man. I love. Was that Howard Mandel? Yeah. yeah, yeah. And it's one of those things. Like I understand we. I, don't, I won't say in a general sense, live in a better time. In terms of entertainment, we live in such an awesome time, right? Yeah, God. But yes. like, I am ashamed that Ben will never understand what <sighs> destination viewing was of like. Who wants to be a millionaire is on. Oh, we are God, all watching. The world is watching that tonight. Dealer No Deal is on. We are fucking yep. watching Dealer No Deal. Ne- deal. I bought the little, well, I didn't bought I probably got it as a gift on Christmas, but like the ne- Dealer No Deal, like plug and play. Yes. Where you plug I had it the in. exact like, same yeah, one. Yeah, exactly. Yep. I was like, I fucking love, oh, the banker's calling. Uh huh. Uh huh. All right, he'll offer you $250,000 <laughs> to fuck off right now. You know? <laughs> and it's a game, so you don't get the real money. So you're like, no, I'm not fucking saying yes to this. The, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. God, what a show that was. I missed right. out on this. Like, I, I don't really. Know. I, I know it's one with all the 30 briefcases. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's all I know. Held by all these models. Fucking yeah. no reason. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean, like, insane. Yeah, I don't know what. So the, the idea was, yeah, I think it was 30 briefcases. Yeah, right? I believe so. You would choose a briefcase, right? Then you'd have it there. Then you would sit there, right? And they'd have the odds of if the million dollars is in your case, like as you went. So, you know, whatever. You would then go, all right, cool. So, I, and I'm rusty too, but yeah. you, I, I, I see that, you know, I'll pick briefcase three or whatever. They'd open briefcase three and you'd see it was either, you know, uh, whatever amount of money it was, which then would affect the odds that you had the million dollar case. And then as you went and you eliminate these cases, you start to see, oh man, a million dollars is still in play or whatever it is. Then every so often at his leisure, the banker, which was this guy in a like in, the, in, in, a, booth, in a frosted right? glass yeah. Yeah. Booth where you, you just see the silhouette. silhouette right? He would call yeah. the phone. Howie Mandel would pick up the phone, and they'd be like, "So dramatic." He'd be like, "Okay, okay." Hang on. He's like, "So the banker is offering you whatever amount of money right now. You can take that money and you leave, or you keep playing, right?" And the idea is that as you keep playing, you open a case. Oh shit! It is the million dollars, right? Suddenly, what he would offer you'd be jack shit. This is the one. Is <laughs> <laughs> it 30 like, Rock? Is of 30 course rock? it's yeah. 30 Rock, yeah. Uh, that was where it was like cases full of gold. But anyways, like, so then, you know, <laughs> your number drops, you know, you went bust, da 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 and you, you played this game. And like, 30 rock. You know, you'd get down to like, the million dollars is in one of these cases, the case over there, the case over there. Do you accept what the banker's offering? You know, do you open that case? And, you know, is, is, so is this weird, like, high stakes? Love it. Yeah, it was fun, man. It was fun. Yeah, and this is like an amalgamation where, like, it is still deal or no deal, but, like, you're still eliminating people and everything. So it's Survivor meets, meets it, which is, like, 
my brain immediately goes to like, is this the end times? But also, I would watch the fuck out of that show. Like, I yeah. know that that is entertaining content. The Peacock, man, the live chat. Del- Delaney Twining says 26 cases, Greg. Oh. <laughs> you can read this. Thank you. Fuck you, you fake demon. <laughs> <Demon-Domio laughs> you don't even know any goddamn you don't cases. 26 cases. Fucking clown over here. That's all. I will. I will say in terms of like the uh, competition reality shows. There's a show on right now called The Traders. Okay. That is. It, it blew up. Talking about it is amazing. It blew is up. Everyone or just this office? Because I've heard a lot of people. Oh no, no, it's it's everyone. everyone yeah, yeah, this yeah. this is different. This is like transcended uh, me and Joey bullshit. It's also that, but okay. it's so much more. So it started, if I remember correctly in uh europe and i know that uh lucy and tam and james and lisa and all them are obsessed with the original version uh of it it's among us the show oh, okay. so it's all these people in this mansion and uh at, at, there's three um traders and they are the, the rest of the, the the faithful are trying to figure out who they are every night somebody gets murdered and then they're in like real to, life <laughs> and then in between all that there's like incredible like survivor type competitions they have to go through but then there's that game of like are they gonna like kind of throw one of the games or like kind of like the mole used to be um the mole. but they're just like adding more and more and more money oh, and it's Cummings. hosted oh. by alan cummings and spy kids he might be the the single greatest human being on the planet like He's the best host I've ever seen on any of these shows. So entertaining, so goddamn funny, taking it so seriously. And the entire cast is all from different reality shows, oh, okay. like competition or just housewives. Huge. Huge. But what's funny about that is there's the housewives, like the Bravo Universe people, there's- and then there's multi winners of Survivor or Big Brother. <laughs> and they're in a, a game show type setting, a competition setting. So it's like, clearly these competition people have the upper hands like they know how to play this stuff whereas the housewives are just like this is fun i don't know what the fuck i'm doing yeah and the combination that that results in is it's brilliant like i it's the most entertaining uh, of the shows and also the production value is i mean maybe 10 times what it needs to be yeah but that makes it so much better like they take it so seriously i i would love to know how much the show costs because yeah. like every single episode is it looks like a fucking movie like and it they have to wear these like little hoods when they like go to discuss uh i, I never played among us so i don't really understand what, <laughs> what the analog would be uh but like when the the, the murder there's have an to, emergency meeting emergency yeah. meeting when they have to do that like they walk through and they have these like hoods and it's in the middle of the night and they have like torches that they're walking through and it's like what are we fucking doing here and awesome. then they take off the hood and it's fucking phaedra from real housewives of atlanta and i'm just like God bless the fact that I get to live in a time where her and poverty from Survivor, one of the most beloved uh, c- competitors of Survivor ever, are interacting, and it's just gold, guys. Is, do, so the audience, they know who the traders are. Yes. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Fun. Which makes fun. it yeah even more fun to to watch. That's but awesome. yeah, there's just some disasters on here, but every episode is pure gold. Fuck yeah! I think I'm gonna watch that. It's you should. Fun. It's so fun. good. It's all that. Bring back tough enough. Bring back tough enough now. You know what I mean? Tough enough. Tough enough was the. WWE, WWE still WWF Attitude oh, like, Era series where it was like, all right, we got all these guys who want to be wrestlers to, and gals. The Miz, who, yeah, Miz was there who want to be wrestlers That's and right. so you compete. To, you know, you get eliminated, you get a contract kind of thing. I mean, I was really into the Ultimate Fighter back in the day. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah I watched yeah, like yeah. maybe the first. I actually watched a lot more of that than I remember because I was reading that book that Michael Thompson wrote. Yeah, um, and it went through the eras of that. I was like, yeah, I watched a lot. Of, <laughs> I watched a lot of this. What a great idea. <laughs> First, first season. Let me, let me pitch you on the Ultimate Fighter. Tell me from the beginning, then. Right. <laughs> we get, we get a gr- two groups of guys together to train to figure out who's going to be the Ultimate Fighter, and once he is, he gets a contract with UFC. Right. Uh-huh. So lot, the two guys from each team that like end up being like the the top ones go against each other. The coaches they eventually figure out will also be headline the event. Oh. So it was it, it was like Chuck Liddell. Uh, uh, um, not, uh, did GSP ever do? I think he did actually. Yeah. It was like Chuck, it was Chuck Liddell, uh, uh, Randy Couture, like they were, that was that rivalry. They were both coaching, so. but at a certain point, they realized they were like, "Wait, these guys actually have to fight, and they have to fight every week." And so, if you won one and you got drawn to fight the next week, they were like, "Oh, because <laughs> you can't fucking fight. You can't get concussed one week and then come back the next week." So they had to have some rules for it. But it was a fucking awesome show. That's awesome. awesome. And the fr- and season one, Stefan Bonham versus um, now I'm forgetting the guy's fucking name. When they beat the shit out of each other in the ring, and it was like a fucking five round slugfest 
and, oh, it was uh, Forrest Whitaker. Uh, Forrest uh, Griffin. Forrest Whitaker. Forrest Whitaker. Forrest Griffin. <laughs> <laughs> Forrest Griffin and Stephen Bonham. <laughs> and I'm, they, I'm hanging up the amazing. acting thing. No more, <laughs> no more Rogue One. I'm here to fucking UFC fight. But best moment in UFC, these guys have a slug fest. Just bloody. And they're both standing Jesus. at the very end of it. And Dana White comes out. And he like has a wh- he like whispers with one of the guys that owns the OC and he comes out and he goes, I gonna be honest with you guys, like Forrest won that, but we're giving you guys both because uh, it was so fucking I mean, it was like sick. it was the epitome of like everything you've ever like the climb of the UFC clawing its way to becoming a real yeah. fucking sports when was this? organization. This probably I want to say was 2003? like three two thousand three two thousand two. Yeah, this is wild. This feels like something. I, Irvine. I mean, UFC so big, it feels like something that should be brought back in some way. Or is 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 I think they did they did it for a while. I think well, what happened was they expanded, yeah, and they got really really they they started expanding out to like other markets like Spain and Italy and all and Mexico and all these places, and they just got too big and they, and it kind of crumbled. And then UFC ended up selling. And then uh, that got sold, I think, again, right, to the organization that now is WWE. Endeavor. So, cool. yeah. And that was that was a whole thing, too, because the guy that runs Endeavor, um, okay. who is, the, I believe, the agent that uh, Ari Gold's based off of an entourage. Oh, okay. uh, his name's Ari Emanuel. He wanted the UFC for the longest time, and everyone's like, you can't, you can't afford it. It's like a billion dollars. And he eventually made it happen. Guy, guy's crazy, but he made like it happen. Ballers. Uh, ballers and fucking entourage pulled together. He wanted it. And he made the big, and then he made the biggest like sports slash talent slash biggest thing agency on the planet. It's pretty nuts. I don't know how it's going now, but I'm sure it's great. <laughs> I haven't watched UFC fight forever because it's just they're just expensive to watch. Yeah. And then on Saturday nights, most of the time, I'm if I'm at a bar, like I was at a bar last Saturday night and they were playing the UFC, and I was like, that's great. I have to go upstairs and bomb my ass off <laughs> for eight minutes. <laughs> and that's what happened. It's your own ring, it's your own personal <laughs> ring, right there. Roger, I'm excited for you to go to Rada with us tonight. I am. I'm excited, excited to get too. some BJs with you too. Hell yeah. Are we getting a bazooki? Nah, I don't want a sweet. I want some wings. Yeah, I, want you do. I gotta tell you. What's a bazooki? I'm back on the Peloton. You're looking real good. You've got a long a time off it. Took a long time off it, but I'm back on. Yeah. What are you down to? I don't know. I'm not, I don't weigh myself. You don't weigh it's not about that. It was one of those things of just like, you know, like driving home. And there was a lot more jiggling than usual. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not comfortable with what's happening here. Had to, had to do something. Pizza cookie? Yes. Is that what it is? Okay. Yep. I put it you together. I put it together. But, I mean, it's it's not Gosh. that, though. But, like, yeah. it's so it's a big so old cookie more. with just so much ice cream on top. Yeah, yeah. You're not it, selling this right. It's a, it's a, they make it when you order it. In a pan this big, they go. They put it in the oven. And it's freshly baked. Yeah, it's like a skillet or something. Yeah, yeah. it's well. There, you know, BJ's does the deep dish pizza. I've never been to BJ's. Oh really? Yeah. Oh, you're gonna have a great oh, time. Oh, you're gonna have so much fun. Okay, you're gonna get the If you're lucky, <laughs> Mike might change his pants in the parking lot. Uh, but they put it in like a little like. A oh, little okay. Pizza yeah, pizza. yeah, yeah, yeah. I've had. No, 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 no. Hold on, hold on. These are the trios. This is this That's a small seems to be the trio. Yeah, yeah. No, they That's make small. the big where where like you can order it just you get a little flavor of each. Normally, it's a big dog. Yeah. I'm excited. It's going to be fun. You're Ladies and gentlemen, this has been a fun podcast. Thank you for supporting it. Remember, if you want to go the extra mile, you can get the Kind of Funny membership on Patreon or YouTube to get each and every episode live as we record it. Get it ad-free. Get the vlog. Of course, get all the other shows ad-free. Get the other podcasts live as we record them, too. However, if you have no bucks tossed our way, no big deal. The Kind of Funny podcast comes to you free with ads without any of the exclusive stuff each and every week on podcast services. And, of course, YouTube.com slash Kind of Funny. Gentlemen, thank you so much for hanging out today. Thanks thank for you. having us, Greg. Thank you, Piper Paraboo, for making Coyote Ugly. I am still waiting for a sequel. I'm sure there's more stories to tell in that universe. I'm, I'd be shocked if there wasn't a direct-to-video sequel to that floater. It does yeah, have that so. vibe, it for has sure. To have that. Well, before we go, I want to yeah, close that, that, yeah. that, that loop before I we could have swore here. there was a Coyote Ugly 2 starring not any of the people that were in the first movie. Roger, is there a single movie that you could do what Greg did for? Like, I can do any enti- movie. No, not movies. I can do entire, like, give me the, seasons of Spongebob. Like, okay. I've done that before, but no, I can't. Give me the, the, give me the, the one-paragraph synopsis of Star Wars, The Phantom Menace. Oh... Isn't that your Star Wars? Yeah, I guess. Last time I watched it, I skipped through the entire movie. Yeah, I couldn't watch it. Skipped through the entire movie. <laughs> Last time I watched it, I skipped through it. I oh, ha- fuck. I have a Screen oh. Rant article from January oh. 2023, 20, which uh, Bear, uh, Kevin has a bit. Uh, Kylie 2 receives a disappointing update from star Piper Paraboo. Actor Piper Paraboo recently gave a disappointing update regarding the sequel to her cult classic film, Coyote Ugly. Uh, in it, she stars as Violet Sanford, a singer-songwriter hopeful who moves to New York 
<laughs> to desire a music industry, she <laughs> finds a terrible name. Speaking with Variety, Paraboo gave a disappointing update. For oh. years, Tyra Banks, who portrayed Zoe in the film, has been trying to get the cast back together for a follow-up to the cult classic. Stop saying cult classic. Without revealing specifics, Paraboo explained the momentum on the sequel has been halted. However, the actor teased a new direction for the possible film. Uh, quote, we hit a roadblock. I can't say what it is. But there is an alternate idea. I also can't, I also nobody can't wants say. To fund this movie. I also can't say what that is. But I like the alternate better than the original idea. I also have a lot of faith in Tyra Banks. I mean, if you don't trust Tyra to get something done, you're missing the boat. Oh my god, that is. She did it like Tyra is not on the right side of things nowadays. So I don't know about all that. That's wild. Yeah, I don't see Tyra having the clout that she's gonna have. But we'll see what happens. I mean, that's why she's trying to make <laughs> Coyote Ugly too. Hey man. Ugh. There's a market for it. I then is there? I then appreciate. Oh, I, for sure. Coyote Ugly goes as far to do another section of the article. Goes, what could Coyote Ugly 2's story oh. entail? You know, what, you know what happened here is he that was it, and then his editor was like, "You got to go farther. We this need more words. We need more words. There's a lot of ads ads on this page. What's that new direction? Well, I've I've queued up the official music video. Can't fight the moonlight. That we'll watch more. Perfect. Of the okay. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, it's been our pleasure to serve you.